Welcome to the Test Guild Security Podcast, where we all get together to learn more about security testing with your host, Joe Calantonio. Hey, it's Joe, and welcome to another episode of the Test Guild Security Podcast. Today, I'm going to be sharing a session that Mike Spanbauer gave at the last Secure Guild online conference on developing a security test methodology. Mike is a security evangelist for Juniper Security, and his work and expertise is in network and security advisory, consultant, and product strategy with over 25 years of experience providing a breadth of perspective, as well as providing approaches to solve for operational and governance needs that a lot of organizations face. Before joining Juniper, Mike worked for NSS Labs in their enterprise services and consultant practice, where he authored a number of methodologies and worked closely with their testing group to provide guidance and accurate information to their clients. So as you can tell, Mike really understands not only security, but also testing, which makes him a perfect guest for the show. So if you want to know how to create a security testing methodology for your organization, you don't want to miss this episode. Check it out. It's no secret that the number and complexity of applications are growing. But what is alarming is that 90% of security incidents result from exploits against defects in software. The need for better application security has never been higher, and MicroFocus Fortify is here to help. Fortify is the recognized market leader in application security, and it is the most comprehensive and scalable application security solution that works with your current development tools and processes. With Fortify, you can start security applications in a single day, including custom code, open source, or commercial components, and scale as your needs grow with an on-premise, as-a-service, or hybrid implementation. Check them out, head on over to microfocus.com forward slash app security. Hey, Mike, welcome to Secure Guild. Thanks, Joe, for having me. So, Mike, let's set the stage. Uh, what is a test methodology, in your opinion? Yeah. What it is, is it's a document that provides context of the test. And I think most important is to recognize that this is not a document for you, but as it's more for those who will consume and rely on the test results, the data on the outside, or on, at the end of this, this testing series. So uh, it's imperative that you include uh, the business or the use case within this methodology to ensure that context is set uh, appropriately, as well as it outlines the assumptions or dependencies, whether that's uh, environment, whether that's uh, application software, operating systems, uh, you know, cloud infrastructure, tool sets, et cetera. These aspects all go in, and, and it's as much to knock down some of the noise questions <laughs> so that folks get to the meet the, the test that output itself, uh, as it does um, provide that transparency and trust that the discipline itself followed in the methodology uh, was robust. And again, what we're looking to achieve with the test methodology is that transparency and, and a little bit of insight into how we created the environment, set up the test series, and achieved the outcome so that it's repeatable across both A, time, but as much B teams, right? It could be a, a successor uh, in your role, you know, down the line that has to run this test again. And a great methodology would allow them to largely pick up what you had done before and achieve the same outcome. All right, cool. So what do you think should be and should not be in a methodology from your experience? So what is in? This is the, the versions, the software, the test bed uh, and, and the assumptions. Right, the environmental factors. Uh, these uh, include you know, uh, performance characteristics of the environment. What else might have been deployed at the time? Uh, production software running uh, as as background apps. Uh, you know, in the context of web security. Uh, you know, understanding which Apache revision and and what what uh, patches are applied. All, all of these factors are part of that environmental setup. The use case or the validation approach. So what are we looking to prove, right? What, we, what do we expect this technology to do, uh, you know, in the case of an endpoint uh, security product or, uh, you know, again, uh, some, some web app firewall, uh, network security, regardless of what it is that we're assessing, uh, making certain that we are clear 
in respect to how it'll be deployed and what's expected of it uh, is crucial here. In addition to then the last piece being uh, the test cases themselves by capability. And so we'll speak to this in a a moment a little bit more. Uh, But what I mean here is uh, that you know, products often do a great deal more than what we're necessarily expecting or or what we'll utilize. So if that's the case, don't try to test everything that a product claims. Rather, this is the purpose of the use case also. Focus on the scope that suits your need, your use case, and the capabilities required to deliver on that. And so you zero in on what's applicable, and this provides portability between tested products, tested solutions. Now, real quick, as I mentioned, it's also important to recognize what's not in a methodology. So the testing processes themselves, uh, set up, tear down, these things are all implied in the environmental factors, uh, the failures, right? So the methodology is the reference framework for the test. It's not the things that didn't work to set it up. (laughs) Um, uh, You know, it's really gonna represent what we did use, and that's implying successes. So don't worry about the test for failures, and trust me, we'll spend a moment on this. Uh, it was probably where we spent as much energy as anything uh, at NSS uh, to really validate the tools would work uh, in the context of our client environments and to really deliver uh, repeatable results. As well as the last piece is fairly self-explanatory, but a methodology is separate from a test uh, results set. Uh, so, so yes, you may only be testing one product, or you could be testing a series of products, but those are uh, additional documents. Those are separate from the methodology. Again, this is just the legend or the, the key um, that sort of sets the stage for everything that follows so that you can run the test uh, time and time again. So, Mike, does everyone actually need a security methodology? It sounds like a little complex, a little cumbersome. Any thoughts around that? If people tell, have asked you that or said that to you? And, and there are are options, um, but there's caveats. And and these are questions that you can ask yourself uh, to determine if the scope of the test series or the test case that you're executing, uh, you know, if if it's even moderately complex or uh, it expands past a, uh, a, you know, a specific period of time, which is reasonably discrete. Well, you probably ought to have a methodology for your own sanity and for the benefit of the audiences who will depend on your data, right? So do you plan to run this test series multiple times or will there be perhaps multiple testers running it? The methodology helps to provide that consistency across the team or across testers in order to achieve that repeatable output. How many audiences are we talking about? Are they are they internal audiences or are they external to your organization? Uh, you know, because it's not likely you're going to be presenting to all of them at the same time and ensuring that the data as well as the uh, guidance is consistent between those presentations. Again, having a methodology will assist to uh, provide both consistency in the message and the content, as well as uh, to provide that grounding and the foundation that allows one to readily tell the story in an incredibly consistent manner uh, without missing something, without mis- losing, you know, uh, leaving something out. So what does a tester gain out of having a test methodology in place for security? As well, are you, the tester, personally available for every results discussion? The reason I suggest this piece is that uh, when it comes to scrutinizing uh, the results set data, you know, whether that be a uh, performance factor or in the context of security, uh, and largely when you look at you know, uh, malicious activity, behavioral intent, or, or you know, exploits, et cetera, uh, there's more than just the data of did it, did it not, right? You know, certainly binary is sometimes the case, often the case for uh, a security efficacy uh, criteria. However, uh, the, the rest of the attributes such as uh, log detail and such uh, is the color of the conversation, the qualitative piece. And uh, the methodology can provide the air cover to a degree to uh, sort of tamper down or, or to, to reduce the amount of noise and kind of again scrutiny that may come at your test results so that they stand based on the credible merit that they deserve from a well-executed test plan without having you 
necessarily there for defense or for defending the results at each time that somebody asks one of these questions. So uh, I found that that's where a lot of the energy is spent, especially when it comes to disputes, uh, because you know not everything's always black and white, and it's that gray space, the you know grayware or or and what have you um, that uh, will will create the most I wouldn't say friction, but certainly contention uh, and, and uh, most interesting debates. And so with the right setup and definitions of the test case, uh, the explicit expected behavior, expected outcome on a good or a uh, bad result will readily um, disarm you know, some, some detractors uh, of the data set of the results and set the stage for you know, really, again, a more impactful uh, consumption of, of the results set. I mean, again, you know, these results are often quite lengthy to achieve um, for the whole test plan. Many series uh, that we ran were three to six um, weeks at minimum per product. And in that context, when you look at the aggregate of, say, you're running three, four, five, six products through a series of tests, uh, in the instances where you cannot run them in perfect parallelism, uh, you're looking at quite a bit of time, some months uh, in some cases, uh, if not at least hundreds of compute hours where you're running these in, in parallel. And it all comes down to make certain that you have defensible data sets and that it provides that guidance so that you know you can focus on uh, the, the meaningful impact of the results versus just defense of the data itself. The tools, this one um, is, I think, actually uh, another one of the stickiest points is which version of uh, the, the the platform or the tool set, right? You know, Burp Suite, uh, Ixia, uh, Spire, you know, whatever test tools and or uh, you know products that you're using for your environment for your series of tests, uh, knowing which revision was it running, what uh, exploits uh, you know PCAPs or uh, you know, threat materials are, are fed in for the purpose of efficacy validation, and so these pieces. Um, help at least educate the user and, frankly, provide some transparency of confidence for, for the test bed, for, for the testers, uh, in your uh, willingness to share that detail. And it's also a capture once, and the value is, is multiplicative because then you just go read the doc, come back to me if you have questions. The last piece is perhaps, I think, the most notable quote from uh, uh, one of the test architects, <clears throat> and this is that, Context doesn't transfer. And, and what that means is that uh, without this environmental context, without either the, the, the threat <coughs> kill tame detail or the tool sets used, then there's any number of questions that can be introduced. And, and that subjects the whole test uh, results set to, to more intense scrutiny and frankly, just being discarded uh, because of doubt. And that's what we're trying to avoid is that the data set um, is resilient uh, and robust enough uh, to, you know, to stand against assailants and to really, you know, be able to hold its own ground based on merit and based on the, uh, the discipline executed, you know, through the test series. So I think, you know, this is where in most instances, I'd argue that, that a methodology, even a lightweight one, you know, a page, two pages, three pages uh, serves the purpose uh, to help you and to help uh, the data set, again, um, really uh, be above judgment. So, Mike, what do you think is the secret to creating an effective security methodology? What's the secret? What's the formula? It's it's not a secret, right? You know, really comes down to domain expertise, uh, testing, uh, you know, in, insights, tools, and and hard work, diligence is going to be the is the, the key to success, both in a methodology but also in the full execution of a test plan, a whole test series, and ultimately business resilience, right? And when we look at uh, security resilience and business continuity and, and these concepts of depending on multiple layers of these technologies in order to effectively run our business and uh, is support defense against adversarial action, uh, no matter what size your business is, it's, it's critical. And so we know that hard work is involved, uh, but I mean, I think, Again, in respect to testing specifically, you know, as, as a guy who, who you know, ran uh, a large portion of the organization for quite some time uh, knows, and, and you know, I had a number of recs open at any given moment, uh, finding 
both a testing um, discipline or expertise in addition to uh, the security expertise, the domain knowledge of both <clears throat> is incredibly difficult. You know, it's either a commitment to groom for a year or two, or you end up, uh, you know, having to pay uh, incredibly high uh, figures for capabilities and for folks that can do this. So, Mike, I know at the Secure Guild, you did provide a formula. What's the first part of the formula? This is the formula <clears throat> that drives what's in a methodology. So you, you start with really, again, those use cases. Everything stems from what the product is supposed to do right? for your organization. What are your requirements, your needs? Not what the vendor's selling, not what's written in the data sheet. What do you need it to accomplish? And so this is the you know, top of the tree, if you will, or, or the start of this, this flow to begin to develop the series of test cases. So capture that uh, you know, and, and any factors uh, that are or are not potentially testable this time. It doesn't necessarily have to represent everything uh, that you want to test. And so you can scope the test for either time reasons or variety of factors accordingly. Just be mindful that it's captured, that that's out of plan, and this is in plan in the context of this test. Again, it's as much for the folks that you will be talking to as those you'll never have a chance to have a conversation with in order to defend your results. Nice. So what's the second part of the formula? Next, the environment. Apps, platforms, uh, you know, test tools, versions, software, patch revisions, even threats, right? In, in the context of you know, capturing threat feeds or, or pulling in PCAPs, whether you use uh, you know, one of the frameworks or, or, or you know, uh, you know, test beds, or you've you've captured your own, you know, or, or you know, obtain those through peer sharing. You know, there, there's a host of mechanics. We had over a dozen uh, that we used uh, at NSS in order to capture uh, current campaign uh, threats. And so, it's imperative though that you have what's being used by the adversaries against the use case, the targets that we're testing for. Uh, to both provide credibility to the test um, because there is a currency or, or a time-bound nature, uh, but it's also as much about, uh, again, representing that this test is a specific scope. It, it's not a blue ocean. We tested everything. Uh, it's just not feasible. Right? There's, there's no product that you could possibly do that with. But also, it's not so narrow as to be limited in the value or impact or application of the data. All right, so that was the second part. What's the third part or third piece of the formula? Then the capabilities is, is uh, third. And, and, and the capabilities is really going to be you know, the bulk of the methodology. And within the capability set, this is test case by test case, uh, the various capabilities of the technology, the solution. Uh, and, and, and this is, again, not explicit to security, right? It's broadly applicable to any technology you're looking to test against include the definition of what it is that we're talking about, uh, performance measures, right? You know, uh, HTTP, uh, you know, or, or, or you know, uh, yeah, the, the, the packet sizes, uh, you know, HTTPS, uh, what's expected, you know, how large is the frame, are we allowing jumbos, you know, it, it, whatever's appropriate for the technology under test uh, is captured in a definition so that it's, it's clear what um, each test case uh, is, is set up to do, then, um, you know, walking through what's expected. So a bit of the behavior uh, of, of capability as to, you know, what do I expect to, you know, in some cases it's binary, does, does not. In others, uh, it's decent, right? You know, and, and it's this qualitative grading, uh, capture that so that the reader of the results can largely consume your output without, uh, again, having to come back and, and hammer you for phone calls. So, you know, it, it's it's manageable in small orgs, but the larger you get, it becomes rather intendable. And, and some of our clients were, you know, multinational, uh, 100,000 plus seat organizations. And, and frankly, conversations could occur or need to be you know, occurring in every time zone. So, this is the reason for a great methodology because it reduces the number of questions that may come uh, from all quarters. And you may never even know where those are going to be coming from. So document well. All right. So then now let's uh, bring it all together. What's the last piece of the formula? You know, what validation details are captured so or, or will be captured. 
So those don't necessarily need to go into the test report or the results set, but just note that you have captured those for the purpose of validating your result. So, you know, this is something that, you know, it's needed in every instance, uh, but when it comes to, uh, again, that scrutinizing uh, eye, that, that, that you know, uh, ability to defend your data, having the details that led you to a conclusion uh, is, is important. And oftentimes when somebody challenges just because they, they want to poke, <laughs> they're like, look, I've got all the logs, right? I'm happy to send them to you. It's about 12 gig. Where would you like those? You know, if, if you sort of just share that, yeah, we've got everything, um, you know, happy to share. Oftentimes, like, uh, okay, it, they'll take your word for the outcome and the results at that point. Um, they'll, you know, have them available and in, in, it's not a bluff, right? Because you'll end up with that one guy who'll call it and you're like, all right, I'll send it on a drive, right? Just, you know, <laughs> give me a couple of days to, to ship you the thumb drive or what have you. Uh, you know, make certain you do have that, but capture here in the methodology what you did capture, right? Or, or what you did um, record during the test series. And then finally, at the tail, include some of the other aspects of consideration if necessary or if, if applicable, right? Um, you know, is cost a factor of a specific series of methodology, uh, deployment, maintenance, deliverables? These are the aspects that I think, um, you know, from a reference methodology that, that we you know, do a lot of uh, were useful. Though for the private engagements for, uh, you know, various companies, various enterprises, and helping them in their own service architectures and security testing, they weren't as concerned about these facets because they've already got really robust models for most of those operational mechanics. What they were looking for ultimately was uh, integration criteria, right? Does you know something work particularly well, you know, the assault, what's the extensiveness of the API set? And and you know, taking that to its logical conclusion down the path. Uh, of, of is it applicable uh, beyond the immediate test case scope to perhaps a more broad implementation or, or consumption model? All right, where, where do test tools actually fit into this whole methodology? The tools that you're using, let's just say that uh, I have not yet met a test tool that works perfectly. Uh, there's always some scenario, some incident, some uh, you know test schema. Uh, that causes it to behave a little strangely uh, and not have repeatable results. What I need from the tool side, you know, the tooling itself, it must uh, behave reliably and do so uh, over time so that I'm not questioning the tool. I'm looking solely at the product, the technology, the, the uh, capability under test. And the only way to have confidence the tool is behaving as it's supposed to is through validation and potentially a hardening motion. Uh, this is not for you know, every tool, but, but it's because of this that uh, I advise you pick a reasonably robust uh, you know, tool suite uh, and, and that you well, learn its quirks, <laughs> learn, learn it intimately uh, and understand. And, and it's um, you know, through repeated testing, uh, the rinse and repeat, uh, You'll, you'll know where to avoid, which tests are reliably um, solid and, and thus uh, how to best use it or, or them uh, for, again, you know, the purpose of your, your test schema. So this is, you know, there's no science to this. This is just time spent with the tools. Uh, every tool has, has issues. Uh, again, there's no exceptions, uh, you know, across the, the dozens and dozens of tools that we used. Uh, there's, you know, only been a handful of instances where there's not at least uh, one new feature <laughs> introduced uh, in, in the process. And it, you know, these vendors are very keen to fix the products if it's a commercial tool or an open source, but right? the community largely already knows about these things and they've documented it. And so you don't always have to experience these yourselves. Do a little homework, a little, little you know, research on, on the various forums, right? You know, uh, you know, on the repos or, or, or in Reddit, you'll find, you know, an often, often case, uh, oftentimes rather, a lot of uh, peer commentary and color so that you can avoid these issues that have already been discovered and often experienced <laughs> by others. So, Mike, how, how would you summarize what the whole purpose is of, of having a methodology in this whole type of approach that you've given so far? So the, uh, the purpose at the end of this is, again, that repeatability, uh, because that's where the trust in the data, in the output, the results lies. 
And, and that's one of the keys to a methodology that stands the test of time, uh, but also, as importantly, uh, will will address you know those those hard questions, the the critic in the corner, uh, and and really satisfy them like okay, this guy you know our gal uh, did an enormous amount of work and, and knows you know knows these tools, knows the space, knows the the test cases you know well. What about peer review? Does peer review come in at any point during this methodology? You know, it's it's really just. Uh, the process of going through, uh, you know, requests for comments, um, and not in the IEEE or, or you know, ITF uh, context, but peer review. You know, really having both your internal organizational peers uh, take a look at it, or, or you know, potentially sharing with others that you know are in similar uh, roles in other orgs that are looking at using products in a similar way. It's always great to have an extra set of eyes on uh, a methodology. Uh, both for the purpose of, of sanity checking, right? did I miss something? Is, is there something that I overlooked? Uh, or in addition, right, just simple errors and, and, and uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You'd rather find these things out before you go and conduct a test that runs weeks or longer, uh, and ensure that that test uh, is is going to you know be robust according to your org's use case and needs. You ultimately have. Uh, editorial rights, and and you can you know not accept that feedback if it makes sense, uh, but communicate to those uh, contributors that you know there's a specific deadline, and you know feedback's appreciated. And you know, we found that uh, you know both uh, three to four, uh, you know five uh, enterprise organizations were always willing uh, to comment and to critique uh, the technology methodologies for for you know for the security solutions that we ran, uh, in addition to those clients dependent on it. And from that like vanilla or, or core uh, methodology, we would branch uh, according to specific client needs, uh, but that there was always one master methodology. And that's where version control is critical. Like software, a document must provide that guidance because the test results will be tied to the version of methodology that it was executed against, and and that's the reason for this. It's it's a it's a keyed uh, system, and by interlocking them, then the data and the how I did it uh, are, are are you know really uh, providing that structure so that it stands the test of time. And you may not even be needed to be called in when the test data is reviewed in in three months, in in six months, what have you, uh, because. It's clear exactly how you know the test was executed and run. All right, Mike. I'm sure a lot of people are like, okay, so Mike, so when is this methodology done? When is it good enough? Now, cheeky answers, never. <laughs> but the real answer is, you know, when is repeatable, accurate, and you know, I think that that you know the, the bottom line here is that uh, the, the stand the test of time scrutiny and it, it'll pay dividends for you, uh, for your organization, and, and, and in addition, right. This holds uh, the, the technology space a bit accountable. Um, so if it isn't clear, right, I'm very passionate about uh, you know, accuracy in, in data as well as uh, you know, transparency in the security industry. It's, it's what uh, pulled me to you know, NSS. And also uh, you know, what I see you know, in Juniper at its core, right? you know, there's a, a lot of, uh, I think, uh, material value in transparency of data and providing that guidance for an audience so that they can make informed choices themselves. This, this is the purpose, right? This is what a methodology serves and what it achieves. And, and that transparency in the tests, in the approach, in the thought process builds trust, not only in data, but in you. This is a career pillar piece, if you will, um, because I think that, as I mentioned before, testing disciplines, testing as a discipline is difficult in its own right. Adding security to that is, well, it's incredibly unique. And so that combination, that formula, uh, makes you uh, an incredibly valued asset, both in your current org, but also throughout the industry, because you know, the dependence on good security capabilities today is present in orgs of every size, no matter where they're located on the planet. The fact is that in this digitized world, you need great technology that works effectively and does so uh, reliably and consistently. And so this process that I've outlined here works for 
you know, your own process or product selection, or, you know, if you're in a services org helping support another's uh, choice of product and selection, what have you, it'll also achieve the same and also offer credibility and capabilities as far as how you went about this whole process. And it's not just some random test to like, yeah, we'll do that and maybe do this. And does this sound like any proof of concepts you've attempted in the past? The, uh, you know, the process is one that, that isn't scary. It's, it's not, uh, you know, particularly, uh, you know, unique or, or, or difficult, um, but it is time consuming and it does require uh, an, you know, considerable investment of uh, time and focus. All right, do you have any recommendations then for folks that are trying to do this themselves? So my recommendations, start with the use cases, define them well, and be mindful of how long this technology is to last in the environment. It's not just about the capabilities that it's expected to deliver on today, but it's also about if this product's expected to live the life of a project for two, three years, okay, scope, think about what's on the horizon, both from a business perspective and a technology field that may be worth looking at or considering, or at least, um, you know, keeping on the periphery and stating in the methodology that that's out of scope. We know that that's potentially coming. We're not looking at that today, but it'll be something we could extend as a natural branch of the methodology in a future revision to, to include in the test scope. Test tools misbehave. Plan for course correction. In some cases, tossing out a test tool and moving to a different one. The good news is there's a lot of great vendors uh, in the market today uh, that support all manner of, of tests, um, test suites and test tools. Uh, so, so finding the right one for you for a specific incident, for a specific opportunity, uh, you know, largely there's not dead ends. It's rather the energy spent on validating the tool behaves as claimed, and that it'll suit your needs is where most of your energy is spent. And perhaps most importantly, mind the scope. Don't test everything in the data sheet. Don't, don't try, right? That's uh, uh, almost certain recipe for, for failure, for, for significant creep that, that could extend a project well beyond your ability to, to execute it. So be clear uh, in the scope, fixate on chunks that are achievable and grow over time revisioning or you know versioning the methodology with the iteration as, as a growth opportunity right uh, however fast you can iterate and cycle um you know handles and so you know whether you're in a continuous test process in qa or this is in the context of a discrete technology this whole concept the discipline the approach used here um, i've helped guide uh, organizations um, for for years to develop uh to suit their specific needs and you know, this has also uh, is supported you know, performance measures on, on processing uh, or, or storage uh, arrays and, and other capabilities. So this prospect is, is not you know, a particularly you know, genius one, but I think it's just rather crystallizing uh, the critical bits, um, the, the skeletal elements, and, and, and I think the framework that, that ensures success no matter how it's applied. Okay, Mike, before we go, is there one piece of actual advice you can give to someone to help them with their security testing methodology efforts? Step back if you need to. Sometimes you get so close to the problem, uh, it can be really hard to see, you know, the path forward. And and this is not just to testing, but I find that, you know, more times than not, uh, as we're beating our head against the keyboard, (laughs) uh, trying, you know, to to figure out what's what's misbehaving. Is it the tool? Is it the you know, the data just doesn't make sense. Um, why? Uh, step back, breathe, and and then, you know, come at it with a fresh set of eyes or, you know, reach out to, uh, you know, your peers. Thank you, Mike, for your security testing awesomeness. For links to everything of value we covered in this episode, head on over to testguild.com forward slash S48. And while you're there, make sure to click on the Try It Today link under the exclusive sponsor section to learn all about MicroFocus Fortify, which is the recognized market leader in application security. So just so you know, I'm thinking of rebranding this security podcast into the DevSecOps podcast, just to try to get more guests. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that, but just a heads up there. And also, I'm going to be on hiatus for the month of April. I actually turned the big 5-0, and I decided just to take the whole month off to mourn turning 50. So... Thank you, everyone, for listening so far, and hope to see you in May. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Test Guild Security Podcast. Head on over to testguild.com for full show notes. 
amazing blog articles, and online testing conferences. Don't forget to subscribe to The Guild to continue your testing journey.